the personality of the Holy Spirit. John 14 verse 16 And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, and Standby, that he may remain with you forever. One of the greatest misconceptions people have about the Holy Spirit is that they think he is just a force or an object. The Holy Spirit is not water, fire, wind, oil, a dove or air. He is a person, a person with feelings. He is not an it or a force or wind. He is a real person. And when you come to know him, he will become more real to you than life itself. He will become more real to you than the people you see around. He will become more real to you than the very air you breathe. Talk to him. Love him. Embrace him. Grieve not the Holy Spirit, because he is the one you need. The Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He has all the attributes of God. He is omnipotent, which means he has unlimited power and is able to do anything. He is omnipresent, which means he is present everywhere all the time. His presence is not limited by time or space. Because God created the universe, he is above all things and holds all things together. He is omniscient, which means he is all-knowing. His knowledge is perfect and complete. He knows everything that ever was, is, or will be. It is impossible for us to understand this fully, because only God knows what it is like to know everything. The Holy Spirit speaks. He moves. He sees and he has emotions. The Holy Spirit can be sorrowful when he is grieved. That means we can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. All these attributes of his prove that he is not an object, but a person. The Holy Spirit is the promise of God to all believers in Christ. He is to be our comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. Let us consider the various attributes of the Holy Spirit that qualify him as a person and not as a mere force or thing, as some people would presume. First, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. John 14, verse 16 and 17, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, and Standby, that he may remain with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The word comforter in John 14 verse 16 refers to the Holy Spirit, and the Amplified Version of the Bible gives us a full scope of the comforter's ministry. As a comforter, the Holy Spirit is also our counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by. We cannot have all these things in the Holy Spirit and live as if we are alone. Have you ever wondered at the reason the early believers were tortured and imprisoned and yet they remained joyful? It was because the Holy Spirit was their comforter. There wouldn't be a need for the comfort of the Holy Spirit if there is no distress in the world. 
Jesus never told us that there will be no difficult times in our lives, but he assures us of comfort through the Holy Spirit. No matter what you are passing through, the Holy Spirit is with you. He is strengthening you, fortifying you. He comes with strength into your life. The greatest cause of tragedy for believers does not lie first of all in the fact that they are faced with challenges, but in the fact that we are almost unconscious of the fact that the Holy Spirit is with us in our worst times. He comes with strength. Second, the Holy Spirit teaches. Jesus was preparing the hearts of his disciples for the hostility they will suffer when he is gone from them. He told them they would be brought before magistrates, but that they should not be anxious of what to say. He added in Luke 12, verse 12, saying, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. So the Holy Spirit will fill their mouths and teach them the accurate way to respond when they are brought before judges. This was fulfilled in the lives of the apostles, Paul inclusive. They spoke with great wisdom each time they stood before the elders. Stephen had the testimony that people could not resist the wisdom by which he spoke because the Holy Spirit taught him what to say in Acts 6 verse 10. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Third, the Holy Spirit convicts. In John 16 verse 8, Jesus said concerning the Holy Spirit, And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts sinners of their sins and makes them to admit their need for the Lord before they can believe in the finished works of Christ for their salvation. It is not your amazing preaching, or your persuasive speech, or charm, or charisma that brings sinners to Christ. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts sinners of their sin, that when they hear there is a God who is angry at them for their sin, they know it is true. And when they hear that Jesus died for them so that they may obtain eternal life, it is the Holy Spirit that tells them it is true. Again, the Holy Spirit convicts us each time we derail from the path of righteousness, thereby producing a godly sorrow that leads us to repentance. The Holy Spirit is the one who draws you back to Christ when you steer of the right path. Look at your own life and examine it. Before the Holy Spirit entered your life, you would live in sin and wallow in it and enjoy it and have pleasure in it, no problem. But ever since the Holy Spirit entered your life, when you now sin, there is a guilt that you feel. There is a godly sorrow which affects you now. You now struggle to live with sin. Why? because the Holy Spirit convicts. You don't enjoy sin the way you used to. Fourth, the Holy Spirit directs church affairs. Acts 13 verse 2 records the event that took place as certain prophets and teachers fasted and prayed to the Lord. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. The Spirit of God moves in churches. He moves. The Holy Spirit actually confirmed the apostleship of Paul and Barnabas and gave instruction to the church to separate them for the assignment. 
The Holy Spirit actually governed the affairs of the church and confirms the calling of men within the local church. Fifth, the Holy Spirit helps and intercedes. Romans 8 verse 26 Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. Here the Holy Spirit is pictured as the helper and the intercessor of believers. He helps our weaknesses and intercedes for us with groaning that words cannot express. You see, we do not actually know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit searches the mind of God and helps us to pray in alignment with God's will. If you pray without the help of the Holy Spirit, you will pray amiss. But the Holy Spirit strengthens us and also prays through us. Hallelujah! Sixth, the Holy Spirit inspires. Second Peter 1 verse 21 says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Bible was written by holy men through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. How could a man like Enoch, the seventh generation for Adam, prophesy about the second coming of Christ if he was not inspired by the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit breathed upon men in different generations and they saw the mind of God and wrote according to the proportion of revelation they received. Seventh, the Holy Spirit sanctifies. First Peter 1 verse 2 says, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. The Holy Spirit is constantly at work in believers to see that they are daily sanctified. The Holy Spirit continually helps us to become holier on daily basis as we walk with Christ. It is important to highlight that these functions cannot be performed by a force, power, influence or attribute of God. Only a person can do these things. The Holy Spirit is a person. Although he is invisible, he can manifest himself through several ways and his attributes are of person. The Holy Spirit is a person and he is sent to help us in our faith walk. Do not despise the ministry of the Holy Spirit because therein lies your comfort and consolation as a believer.